curiosity, the heartbeat of innovation, and the primary driver behind intellect. The same intellect that makes humans the most formidable power on Earth. But is it really that important? And when exactly did it begin? In this modern age, food can appear at our doorsteps, we can fly across the world on a whim, and our buildings aren't huts, but they scrape the skies. We've taken a lot of risk to get here, risk brought about by burning questions, some that took centuries to answer, and all stemming from one thing, curiosity. It comes so naturally to us that it's hard to imagine a time when it did not exist in life. But things weren't always this way. So when did curiosity begin? To answer that question, we first need to understand what curiosity is. Curiosity is defined as a strong desire to know or learn something. But a word is always more than its definition. And for many, when it comes to curiosity, that something more lies in the motivation behind it. And while you could be externally motivated and have a strong desire to learn to hurdle while running away from a lion, that doesn't feel like curiosity. Perhaps for curiosity, the motivation comes internally. But to be internally motivated, you need consciousness. So, although no one knows when exactly consciousness began, it's likely that it began as a result of an evolutionary advantage. At one point, life was wandering aimlessly, collecting whatever food they stumbled upon to continue living. But sometime, billions of years ago on an early Earth, there was a brilliant spark. Life had a thought, and maybe it was a fleeting, happy accident, but it catapulted that life to the top of the pyramid. Why wander aimlessly when you can find a direct path to exactly what you need? Well, it's clear that this was the secret formula to progress. And for billions of years, that was enough for millions of species to survive and thrive. Then, along came the archaic humans. There's no denying that humanity is different. And for a good early indication of this, look no further than cave art. What exactly they were thinking as they painted may never be known. But what we do know is that it was made with intent, and not for survival, but as a byproduct of curiosity. It may not seem like much now, but this simple act had never been accomplished in all of Earth's history. Little did they then know that this art was a perfect indicator for the potential of humankind. We truly took this concept of curiosity and turned it up to 11. What started as cave art snowballed into supercomputers. We asked each other, what if? that have never slowed down since. When you look at it this way, you can see how it really is responsible for all scientific research and every scientific advancement in the entirety of Earth's history. Whew. So, we know of the humble beginnings and that it led to all this great stuff. But what's really going on behind the scenes? How did life evolve to make sure that this keeps happening? Well, to thrive, life craves information. And it rewards us, not only for exploring, but for what we find while we explore. Studies have shown that our brains have evolved to release feel-good chemicals like dopamine whenever we come across something novel to us. Yep, it's called epistemic curiosity, and it's good vibes only. But for every vibe, there's a vibe killer. In this case, it comes in the form of perceptual curiosity. We feel it when something happens that doesn't quite align with our expectations. Somewhat of a subdued surprise. It's what occurs when you hear someone in the movie say, that is curious indeed. And in order to relieve ourselves of it, we seek out and obtain information, like scratching an itch. But surely, that's the only negative, right? Well, we're dead. So. Yes, curiosity can and often has put us in dangerous and unnecessary situations, but it's clear that when all is said and done, there's still a net positive. It's clear that the rewards outweigh the risk. Most of us feel this way naturally without needing to vocalize it. Imagine a time when you've seen your pet tilt their head to the side in confusion. It's not just adorable to us, it usually comes with a small sense of pride as well. They're trying their best after all. And we know their curiosity to be a valuable trait. Humans respect the power of understanding. And while we've covered what humans are capable of, 
we may also ask, why humans? What's the link between our curiosity and our intellect? For one possible explanation, we can look to evolutionary biology with the concept of heterochrony. Heterochrony is a genetically controlled difference in how organisms develop compared to other similar organisms. It can lead to changes in shape or changes in characteristics. You see it physically in animals like giraffes with their abnormally long necks, but it has more nuance when you apply it to organs such as the brain. For an example, in chimpanzees, brain and head growth stop soon after birth. But for every human, including you watching this, brain and head growth carried on for years after the day they were born. And during those pivotal years, internally, our bodies are hard at work growing valuable organs, while externally, we're busy being curious and exploring. You can see it in babies when they first open their eyes, soaking in amazing amounts of new information. Then, a little later on, it can be heard in the form of babbling, which can be seen as babies trying to make sense of their own reality, all the while assisting in their own intellectual development. All of this is made even stronger by the security humans are able to provide to their young. It's a great example of what sets humans apart from other animals, as it's been shown that infants who view their caregiver as a truly secure base feel safe to explore their environment and learn at astounding rates. In fact, it's believed to be why humans grow so slowly in comparison to other like animals. As infants, our bodies don't devote much energy into physical growth, and instead puts that energy into growth of the brain. As adults, most of us no longer babble, but the same concept of curious exploration manifests itself into fantastic accomplishments, like writing books or setting a world record. It can also manifest as perhaps odd behavior for an animal, such as choosing not to talk for a week, or hiking to a place that we never intend to return to. But we're unique in that way, and it's a great example of why we should embrace our quirks and differences. It matters more than we may realize. But you know what else matters? Not losing sight of what got us here in the first place. In other words, what if we lost our curiosity today? Well, in a sense, it may be happening already. How often do you hear people say that they no longer feel the magic of childhood? Could curiosity be playing a role in the magic they're speaking of? Consider this. As toddlers, we go through our why phase and ask our parents thousands of questions every month. For some of us as teenagers, we're barely asking any questions at all. And finally, when our brains stop growing, most of us are stuck in our ways, and there begins the onset of cognitive decline. But does it have to be this way? Let's not forget that curiosity may be in fact internally motivated. Maybe, as children, when we're stuck in a world where we know so little, and we have heaps of internal motivation, we're making our own magic. So, if you ever feel like you can't know more and want to feel that magic again, then echo this phrase made famous by some of our most gifted minds. The more I know, the more I know I don't know. Who better than them to let you in on the secret that no matter how hard any of us try, we will never know everything. But if you take a page from their book and be your own motivator, you will be rewarded. So, if this interests you, and you don't know where to start, maybe try this. Find your physical comfort zone, leave your mental comfort zone, and re-engage with your curiosity. Interact with your environment, make a shadow puppet, or build a pillow fort. It's not as silly as it may seem because it's not simply a release of dopamine. It's been shown that choosing curiosity leads to decreased levels of anxiety, more satisfaction with life, and greater psychological well-being. And while, yes, we may experience that dreaded cognitive decline, research has also shown that as we age, the core aspects that allow us to be curious show no decline. Curiosity is still there, waiting for us, and we simply need to put ourselves in a mindset that brings it to life. And if you do, you can take pride in the fact that for the rest of your days, curiosity will be a constant right by your side ready to take you on your next adventure or answer your next compelling question. So, whether you're pursuing formal education, learning from home, or following a dream, remember to be curious. 
and be cozy.